What is up everybody, Duck here, and today we are taking a break from traditional box building techniques as I've got some curving slash curving to do. So, uh, the angle I'm following is not a traditional curve, curve which is has a radius. Uh, this one is an exponential curve. So what I've had to do is, and I'm not sure how well this will come up, but I've had to make an equation and I really hope that's in focus. I've had to come up with an equation uh, to get the correct curve. So what I'm doing is I've got a width right here at the beginning. Then halfway through, I need it to double. And then the next distance, I need it to double again. So uh, that equation there gives me the exact distance at whatever centimeters uh, from this end. So zero right at the start being 7.5 centimeters and 100 centimeters being 30. So now that I've got that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this shape out with the jigsaw. So I'm going to have this nice section here. Then I'm going to use the flash trim bit on the router to copy it. So I'll have two. And then what I'll do is I'll get the two sheets of wood and I'll cut the lines in them. I'll probably only need a few as the thickness of the blade and the radius would behave like it was a huge radius and the wider the radius uh, the less there is a difference uh, between the front of the sheet of the wood and the back of the sheet of the wood. So I uh, might need a thinner blade yet, I'm still going to think about it. I might even hand cut it with a tenon saw so I can get a one millimeter groove instead of that blade will probably give me a four millimeter. Uh, that's a possibility too. But yeah, I'm just going to go right ahead and cut this shape out. Alright, and there's the curve. Uh, this, uh, there's a few spots which I uh, was a bit further away from the line, but I made sure not to cut into the line so I should just be able to sand it back and it should be all good but that does look quite, look quite a nice organic curve natural curve that's what I was going for Something I could do too to save a bit of wood is I've just marked this line here and I could cut along it with the jigsaw so when I cut out the next uh, curve and I use the router to trim it I could save a bit of material although I will keep it just like this so when I make the other one I'll have the footprint of both of the curves in the horn so I could have this one here and then the other one flipped over and then I can sit them both on the bottom sheet and get an idea of the shape of it. Alright, I'm back. It's the next day and the next thing I'm going to do is copy this onto this bit of wood here. So the way I'm going to do it is I've laid this flat down onto the board and I've traced around the edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut around it using the jigsaw, leaving about a 5mm gap uh, to get a similar shape. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, clamp very precisely, as I don't have any template tape or double-sided sticky tape. That's uh, I do have some, but it's foam tape. It's not good enough. It'll have too much uh, wobble in it. So I'm going to go around it with the router. Uh, with a flush trim bit, which is what I've got right here. It's got a, a bearing on it, and that should copy the shape of this one here exactly. I've used that flush trim bit uh, to copy shapes, and it's, it's pretty damn accurate. So I should have another exact copy here, which would be uh, closer than just going along with the jigsaw, which I could do, and it's not incredibly well, it doesn't require super high precision, 
but I thought I'd do it this way anyway, uh, at least just to do a bit of routing, so before I do any more, I'm a bit more practiced with it. I haven't used the router in a couple of years now, I believe. Uh, just a quick update on burrito tubes. Uh, they're going quite well. I've still got them tied together. And this time too, I'm going to be cutting uh, I'm going to be cutting towards the light instead of away from it so I can see a bit better. In the last one, I had to set the torch up because it was a bit hard to see the line. There's the next one. As you can see, it's not perfect. Uh, keep the brain active so you don't get any crucial steps. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clamp this on and I'm going to use a few clamps so I can take off one at a time as I work my way around. Uh, the way routers work is uh, they cut into the top bit of wood only until the bearing hits the bottom bit of wood so it'll I'll only be able to remove as much material as is on the bottom one and that's how it transfers the cut. I've adjusted the height so it should fit right through the top which it will and I've had it unplugged during that too rather dangerous. Alright now it's plugged in and the way to cut is going from this way to that way. Uh, you want to cut so the blade's travelling in the direction you're cutting. Just going to wrap it around just to take up some slack. And I'm going to keep that in mind. I might loosen it up. Yeah. All right. this edge completely down and it feels quite good so now all I need to do is this edge along here it doesn't matter the front or the back as uh, this one's going to be sitting on the ground and they just need to be an equal distance from the ground so uh, I'm also going to use this to weight it down so it doesn't move as much I've just transferred the shape of the bottom piece onto the top piece. I haven't done much of the ends as they're not crucial. And uh, hopefully you can see that that is quite equal. I'm not sure how in focus this is going to be. But yeah, they are reasonably good. Uh, I did use just a uh, a bit of blue tack on it just to stop them from sliding across each other if they ever wanted to. Uh, now what I'm going to do next is these are both uh, the profile of the horn. So I'm going to get one of the sheets of wood, uh, probably the, well, the bottom sheet of wood and I'm going to sit these both on it just to see how the curve's going to fit and what kind of space I've got to micromand with uh, that bit of tube placement. Now, as you can see, routing creates <laughs> quite a lot of dust. Uh, something I just noticed too after working with this chipboard is that even though it's about the same thickness as the plywood, it's quite a bit heavier and denser and it's probably not stronger. So that is one of the reasons I'm using uh, what do you call pine plywood instead of hardwood plywood is because it's a lot lighter and for a PA type sub uh, it being lighter means it's going to be much easier to move around. So I'm going to move this in so it's about the thickness away from about that thickness, the thickness of the sides away and also it's the thickness of the back 
away along this edge. So if I get my tube just here, that's all right. Uh, what I might need to do then uh, is because this doesn't fit quite far enough up, ideally it'd be about 30 centimeters, which is I'm probably going to need to take some some out of the, the curved pieces. So I think in the design I had, it had 30 centimeters in front of here and 40 centimeters behind. Right now it's looking at 40 centimeters here and 30 centimeters here. Um, you might have to play around. I think I thought this tube was a bit smaller than it actually is, but hopefully if I uh, design it, well, if I do some modifications, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. I should be able to put the tube just slightly further forward. Uh, to get to the 30 centimeters in the front, I only, yeah, see, I only need to move it that far, and that only blocks about five mils worth of airflow on either side, which should be negligible, hopefully, which is only about, well, it goes from 150 to 145 millimeters. So that's less than 10%, it's about 6%, I think, just off the top of my head. And even then, that 6% is only for uh, that part uh, beneath it, it should be able to be more open. And once again, I'll show you the path that the horn takes. So here is where the driver goes. Uh, this here is the compression chamber. The air will first go up the top here and then it will start off like that and then that will expand into a triangle just here. So the air will come along here, under here where it will curve back up to here. It then gets split into two sides, so it comes down either side here and here, and then curves around again and comes out the front. And those, once again, the thing I've got over there is going to be forming this curve just here, the 150mm PVC that I've cut in half. So if you're wondering how this was going to form a horn, here's a bit of a clue. It's the same expansion but flipped around. Okay, I'll now need to, I'll cut out a third one out of that bit of wood there. And then what the plan's going to be is to space them apart with one right in the middle and then cut the notches in the plywood sheets that I'm going to be bending and sitting them on here and possibly weighing them out and gluing them. Alright, so it looks like the best way to go for this next cut is to arrange it just like this. So I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to go around it with the pencil, except this time I'm going to need the jigsaw a bit more than I've had to before as this bit's uh, much too wide to just whiz the router along. Unfortunately too the camera's getting low on battery so I'm just going to go ahead and do this without recording. got these parts cut, uh, what these are going to do is these are going to space out these three things. So each one is going to be stood vertical with one of these in between it and its neighbour. One will go in the middle, one will go in the end. All right, in order to make sure I'm going an equal distance, I made sure to route this corner right here and that corner right there all the same. So I've lined these two corners up or with each other and I'm just going to drill through them in two spots here in the middle and at the end and then all I have to do is drill through into this bit of wood here or these bits of wood here and they should all be lined up. Alright I've done these ones through all three but unfortunately due to the way screws work if I have two either side of the bit of wood in the same spot I won't be able to screw into the second one that I attach. 
so I'm going to have to offset them just like that. And to do that, I've pushed the drill bit further into the drill so it only goes through these first two layers. And I'll keep in mind that these first two layers, uh, the, this one and this one, uh, had to be drilled together. And then the middle layer can be drilled into the bottom layer here. Alright, I've finished uh, drilling into the ends of the six pieces. So now all I have to do is uh, put them in place. Uh, line it up and we'll go through, uh, not completely, so I can see the head. And then I can line that up to the hole. And screw in just like that. Alright, that's what it's going to look like. So now, just going to finish that off just quickly. Alright, I've finished screwing the ramp together. And oh, it weighs a bit. Ah, uh, here it is. So, here's what I'm going to be lying the sheets of wood on after I've curved them in order to hold them at the correct angle. So, lie down like that. Um, and then I'll push them down and put wood glue into the curves that I do in it. And possibly put some weight onto it too, depending on what's happening. So, yeah, that's what's going on here. Sorry about framing. Um, so I'll get one of the sheets now, just for an example. So it's going to be going on it just like that. I'll probably push right up to the end, leaving just these bits here. Yep, it'll go on just like this with the cuts in it. And then a weight will be put on it to bring it down so it fills in that crescent gap. So as you can see, it's not a, a big curve that needs to be done to the wood, but it is necessary to uh, have the proper progression and also to leave a bit more space on the inside of the horn for the tube and for the driver. All right, I think this will conclude this part of the video. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next episode where I should be cutting the curves and bending this bit of wood right here. Thanks for watching.